Welcome back. This is Chicken Philosophy. Meccan Revelations, part 24, in which, <clears throat> for the first time, in like 20 episodes, it feels like, we will begin a new section in which we will not be talking about the nine traits of the helpers of the mighty. Um, future Gwydion, from half an hour from now, after having finished today's reading, um, <clears throat> without uh, spoiling anything, can you give us a clue as to how long it's going to be before we start the new section, and, and how, how is the new section? Well, I will say that it, it, it took about 25 minutes to finish that section, and the, uh, the, 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 the next section is, uh, so far it's intriguing, and I'm not really sure where it's going just yet. All right, well, um, that's what we have to go on. So, before I begin, uh, this episode is brought to you by Ood. Editor Edward, you know very well that that's not the Ood I'm talking about. It's not even spelled the same. It's a homophone. Well, anyway, I'll just, uh, this is, um, this is incense. They, there's like, uh, fragrant oils and all kinds of oud products that you can find out there in the world. So, uh, you know, this is something, some hard, hand rolled, hard broiled, hard, hand rolled luxury Indian incense, oud, pure aroma, 24N. I think that's meant to be like 24 carats, but it's 24 N. I have no idea. N stands for no idea, but it smells so nice. And see the packaging? It's just super nice. If you saw the uh, whatever BT was reading two episodes ago, Martin Luther maybe, um, then you already knew that this was coming. This, of course, came from Newton, the place where fancy people buy their incense. It's sort of like saying, you know, Vons or something for the... Anyway, um, <clears throat> so, yes, very nice. Here we go. Here we go. How's the music? Is the music all right? Is it Angelo Battlementi? Editor Edward, we've overdone the Twin Peaks soundtrack. Why don't you put on something we haven't played before. Um, cool. I'll go ahead and get to it. Cheers. Mm. The oud and the sugarless coffee. It's a nice combination. Got the incense going straight up. That'll continue more or less until I can't take it anymore and turn on the AC. Yesterday it was pouring rain, but <clears throat> not today. And uh, me in the past forgot to prepare the magnifying glass, so hence I have to get up <clears throat> and go over there and get it. And now <clears throat> we're ready to begin. The forms of knowledge typifying this spiritual stage. So this is the last section. So we're still talking about the, uh, the, the helpers of the body. For a little bit longer. Just a little bit, hopefully. Each of the 114 chapters concerning the, concerning the spiritual, quote, stages, end quote, uh, chapters 270 through 338, <clears throat> concludes with a long list of the forms of spiritual knowledge or awareness, quote, belonging, end quote, to that stage, usually described in a series of cryptic expressions that may relate symbolically to the corresponding surah of the Quran, al kaf in this case, al kaf too. <laughs> sorry, I'm just, it's a light joke, nothing serious. Um, okay, 
Although in most cases, the exact number, the exact inner connection between those descriptions and the rest of the chapter, parentheses or its corresponding surah, end parentheses, is not readily apparent. A few of the longer descriptions in this chapter clearly do illuminate some of the preceding discussions, and quite apart from those internal connections, the immediacy of the first three descriptions in particular, whose poignant contrast between our ordinary ways of perceiving the world and the touchstone of certain rarer moments of epiphany, may find an echo in each reader's experience. Should suggest something of the deeper practical relevance of Ibn Arabi's spiritual insights here. Ah, so this is, of course, Chotwick, um, suggesting that there's uh, something deeper to gain from this description of the helpers of the Mahdi during the apocalypse than just to speculate about the spiritual traits of the helpers of the Mahdi during the apocalypse. Well, I'm listening. I'll, I'll retune my ear and think, okay, this might have something to do with us now today. All right, that's a cool, you know, way of looking at things. Noted. Okay, now we're back to Ibn Arabi reciting. In this bracket parentheses spiritual stage and bracket parentheses, there is a knowledge which removes the burden of anguish from the soul of the person who knows it. For when one looks at what is ordinarily the case with bracket parentheses men's and bracket parentheses souls, we're talking about human souls or no, of course we're talking about human souls. Also probably talking about men's souls, but eh, well, I'll just keep reading. The way that all the things happening to them cause them such anguish and distress. What? Oh, right. <clears throat> that was a whole sentence. I'll start at the beginning. For when one looks at what is ordinarily the case with men's souls, the way all the way that all the things happening to them cause them such anguish and distress, bracket parentheses, it is enough, and bracket parentheses, to make a person want to kill himself. Don't do it. We're on YouTube, so I, I had to say that. And I, I also mean it. God loves you. Never mind. I'll just keep reading. Uh, because of what he sees, this... Because of what he sees. Full stop. This knowledge is called the, quote, knowledge of blissful experience, end quote, because it is the knowledge of the people of the garden, bracket parentheses, of paradise, and bracket parentheses, in particular. So whenever God reveals this knowledge to one of the people of this world... Bracket parentheses already and bracket parentheses in this world. Okay. That person has received in advance the blissful repose of eternity. Although the person with this quality, bracket parentheses in this world and bracket parentheses, still continues to respect the appropriate courtesy, bracket parentheses, towards God and bracket parentheses, concerning the commandment of what is right and the prohibition of what is wrong according to his rank. Senior project manager, first class of... <clears throat> And in this stage is the knowledge that what God made manifest to bracket parentheses men's and bracket parentheses vision. I think this is Chodkowitz deciding to shove these bracket parentheses in there. Men. It's men. <laughs> men. I mean human, but men. This is not Ibn Arabi. It's Michel. All right. <clears throat> anyway. Sorry. Men's vision in the bodies, bracket parentheses of all things in this world, and bracket parentheses, is an adornment for those bodies. What's an adornment? I spaced out. 
Is he talking about a necklace or what? And in this stage, the knowledge that what God made manifest to men's vision in the bodies of all things in this world is an adornment for those bodies. The knowledge is an adornment or a Noah. Uh, uh, uh. That means ornament. <clears throat> and it's a, it's a name. People name their kid. You ever name your kid ornament? Try it. Okay, anyway, sorry. Where were we? Um, oh, this sentence goes on. The knowledge of why it is that some of what is manifest seems ugly to a particular person when he regards it as ugly, and the knowledge of which I it is that a person sees <clears throat> with when he sees the whole world as beautiful. What? Okay. And the knowledge of which I it is that a person sees with when he sees the whole world is beautiful. Okay. Okay. So, right. Knowledge. When you have knowledge, you can look at parts of the world and say that's ugly. But with a particular eye, you look at the whole world and you say, Devo. It's a beautiful world. It's a beautiful world. It's a beautiful world. Yes. As a whole, it's beautiful. With or without a W. Sorry. Okay. When, oh, the sentence goes on, Jesus, when he does see it, so that he responds to it spontaneously with beautiful actions. All right, now this knowledge is one of the most beautiful, bracket parentheses, or quote, best, end quote, and bracket parentheses, and most beneficial forms of knowledge about the world, and it, bracket parentheses, corresponds to, and bracket parentheses, what some of the theologians say about this, that, quote, there is no actor but God, both actor and God are capitalized, and all of his, capital H, acts, capital A, are beautiful, end quote. I mean, I guess if you're, if you're doing a puppet show and uh, one puppet, like, tortures another puppet, then, like, you could say, the puppet show was beautiful. Never mind. Okay. Uh, now, this knowledge is one of the most beautiful or best. Nope. Therefore, these people, bracket parentheses, i.e. those who, pr uh, quote, see things as they really are, end quote, end bracket parentheses, do not consider ugly any of God's acts, except for what God bracket parentheses, calls or makes, and bracket parentheses, ugly. And that is up to him, with a capital H, bracket parentheses, to decide, and bracket parentheses, not to them. Since if, they did, so if you go into, next time you go into an art gallery, <laughs> you say, this, uh, this painting's ugly, and someone says something to the effect of, well, you know, that's your opinion. You'd say, no. God says that this painting is ugly. It is objectively true. And it's up to him. And, and uh, you know, I, I am a helper of the Mahdi, so I would know. Don't say that. Never mind. Forget, forget that advice. It's not good. <clears throat> yes. Um, yes, that is up to him, bracket parentheses, to decide, and bracket parentheses, not to them, since if they did consider ugly what God has called so, they, what, if they did not consider ugly what God has called ugly, they would be disputing with God. You don't want to accidentally... Invoke the Takiriron. We're safe. Never supposed to say those names without first invocating the highest divine names connected with it. They're with. Oh, I didn't do it first. Fuck. Sorry. 
If you watch this backwards, I did. Oh, but then it'd all be backwards. That's probably even worse. What if you invoke a demonic force backwards? Is it angelic? I don't know. These are questions which evolve in the profound abyss of the mind. I wrote that just now. I made it up out of, out of my head. No. I did not. I did not. Some of you knew that. This stage also includes knowledge of what God has placed in the world as bracket parentheses an object for and bracket parentheses marvel and the quote marvelous end quote bracket parentheses as men usually understand it and bracket parentheses is only what breaks with the habitual bracket parentheses course of things and bracket parentheses. But for those who comprehend things from the divine perspective, everything in this, quote, habitual, end quote, course, is itself an object of marvel. So DC, fucking, lay off. Marvel owns that shit, is what they're saying. No, that's not what they're saying. But it could be interpreted that way in a different context by a silly person. Whereas the, quote, people of habits, end quote, only wonder at what departs from that habitual course. Yes. Yes, I've noticed that, considering I've spent much of my time departing from habitual courses. People often go, what the fuck? What? And uh, I just smile and take another sip of my coffee. Actually, over here, it's nice because people just sort of shrug and say, oh, I guess that's what foreigners do. Me being the foreigner in this case, because I live in India. So I can be as weird as I want, usually. I'm usually not when I'm outside. Just when I'm here talking to you. I'll keep, I'll keep reading. Um, and in this stage, there is a kind of knowledge among the things known, bracket parentheses only, and bracket parentheses by inner unveiling. That is, is that the person experiencing this, quote, unveiling, end quote, knows that every person or group, however large or small, inevitably has with them one of the men of the unseen, with a capital U whenever they are speaking then that individual bracket parentheses among the men of the unseen with a capital u and bracket parentheses um spreads reports about those persons in the rest of the world so are we talking about the rosicrucians now uh so that the people discover those things in their own souls i guess not Bracket parentheses, for example, and bracket parentheses, when a group is gathered together in bracket parentheses spiritual and bracket parentheses retreat. Or when a man says something to himself that bracket parentheses presumably and bracket parentheses only God knows, then that man or that group bracket parentheses, who have discovered these reports in this mysterious fashion, and bracket parentheses, go out and tell people about it, so that bracket parentheses soon, and bracket parentheses people, are all talking about it. Or Google suggests like an ad that's like, you didn't even talk about it, you were just thinking it. That's when it gets creepy. That's when it's like, what? <clears throat> Okay, now we're back to Michel Chodkowitz. So this is not a translation of Ibn Arabi. This is the translator in France scratching his head and saying, Ibn Arabi goes on in a long exorcist uh, to cite two personal experiences illustrating this phenomenon. I would like to hear those personal experiences. Would you translate them instead of everything that you translated? That sounds interesting. Please. <clears throat> All right. The first in the year 590 was when he ran into a man in Seville. In, in a Seville? That kind of car? No. Uh, who recited to him several verses that Ibn Arabi himself had composed. 
Opposed. Sounds like a time traveler. Mm -hmm. But never commit to writing. At a particular place in Tunis, one night, several months before, not knowing Ibn Arabi's identity, a man went on to explain that he had learned the poem in a Sufi gathering outside Seville. On the very night, Ibn Arabi had composed them from a mysterious stranger, quote, whom we did not know as though he were one of the, quote within quotes, travelers, end quote within quotes, end quote. Um, after teaching his companions those verses, the mysterious stranger went on to tell them the full name of the author and even to give them the name and exact location of the particular quarter in Tunis where he had heard them, which was precisely where Ibn Arabi had been staying that same night. It seems like maybe he also heard someone outside. Maybe he was like half asleep and he heard someone outside like talking to someone and saying the verse. And then he woke up and thought he had thought of it. I've had that happen. You ever have a song like, oh, wow, that's a good song. I think I wrote that. Paul from the Beatles had that happen. I think it was with Yesterday, if I'm not mistaken. And he went around, everybody he knew, and was like, have you heard this before somewhere? do 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 and they were like, no, no, I've never heard that before. He's like, yes, I wrote it. Like, I think he dreamt it or something. Anyway. Okay. Um, which, yes. On the second occasion, also in Seville, Ibn Arabi was listening to a Sufi friend praising, quote, one of the greatest people of the bracket parentheses Sufi and bracket parentheses path, whom he had met in Khorasan. And quote parentheses in Persia. End parentheses. When he noticed a stranger nearby who remained invisible to the rest of the group and who said to him, quote, I am the, that very person whom this man who met with us in Khorasan is describing to you. End quote. Then Ibn Arabi began describing this otherwise invisible stranger who continued to sit there beside them to his friend who confirmed the exactitude of his description of the Persian master. Was it Hafiz? I wonder if it was Hafiz. I don't know if the timing would work out. No. What? Oh, yeah, because that's the... Uh, it's a different calendar. So when he said, like, 590. So we could do the math. Um, hey, Editor Edward, if this happened in 590... Could the Persian master have been Hafiz? Uh, 590, according to the Islamic calendar, is 1194, according to the more common calendar that you're probably familiar with. And Hafiz was born in 1325. So no, uh, not if uh, he was incarnated. Um, Hafiz's great, 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 great grandfather, maybe might have known Ibn Arabi, but not Hafiz. Thank you for that clarification, Editor Edward. <clears throat> All right. And this stage includes the knowledge of what sort of arguing (bracket parentheses) concerning the practice and principles of religion and (bracket parentheses) is praiseworthy, and what sort is to be condemned. Someone who has, bracket parentheses, truly, and bracket parentheses, surrendered, bracket parentheses, to God, and bracket parentheses, among those who depend on God, should not argue except concerning what he has had confirmed and realized, bracket parentheses, through God, and bracket parentheses, by way of inner unveiling. Not on the basis of, bracket parentheses, his own, and bracket parentheses, thinking and inquiry. So if he has actually witnessed, bracket parentheses, as a direct inspiration from God, and bracket parentheses, that about which they are arguing, then in that event it is incumbent on him to argue about it using that which is better. 
parentheses, Quran 2946, end parentheses, provided that he has been specifically ordered to do so by a divine command. But if he does not have a divine command to do so, then the choice is up to him. Thus, if the task of helping the other person, bracket parentheses, by convincing him of, and bracket parentheses, that, bracket parentheses, revealed insight, and bracket parentheses, has been assigned to him, bracket parentheses, by God, and bracket parentheses, then he has been entrusted with that mission for him. But if he despairs of his listeners ever accepting what he has to say, then he should shut up and not argue. For if he should argue, bracket parentheses, with no real hope of affecting his listeners, and bracket parentheses, then he is, bracket parentheses, really, and bracket parentheses, striving to bring about their perdition with God. And the section's finished! And it only took us approximately 25 minutes to finish the section! This is the end of the section. The next section is called Lesser and Greater Resurrection. The end of that seemed to remind me a little bit about like arguing with people on the internet when you're not going to change anybody's mind and it's just going to like spread toxicity in your own life and the lives of others through comment threads. But then he said something about perdition with God and I'm not a religious enough man to even really know what that means. Editor Edward, while I have this sip of coffee, could you explain perdition with God to the others? Uh, perdition means ruin or loss, physical or eternal. Most of the times that it's mentioned on Google, it's in reference to Christianity. But I, I did find one reference to that it's forbidden to put another into perdition with God. Uh, yeah, so to lose, to destroy, uh, ruin, loss, that kind of thing. All right, well, now you know, and uh, I will know later on when I become Editor Edward. It's a mysterious and magical thing that happens when, you know, when that happens. And... Uh, you know, I know I said that we would begin uh, reading the new... Okay, I'll just say. <clears throat> Lesser and Greater Resurrection. An introduction. So this is going to be Michel uh, Gondry? Michel Chodkowitz. All right. If... All right. So I technically began the new section, but there's like a lot of introduction from Michel, and I don't want to like just read part of an introduction by Michel and not actually get to what it is. So uh, for today, in honor of the possible uh, cameo by Hafiz, or someone related to Hafiz, I mean, not necessarily blood related, but you know, related through the Sangha, you might say, or not, uh, I'm going to read a bit of Hafiz. Um, future Gwydion, from half an hour from now, after having finished today's reading, um, <clears throat> without uh, spoiling anything, can you give us a clue as to how long it's going to be before we start the new section, and, and how, how is the new section? Well, I will say that it, it, it took about 25 minutes to finish that section, and the, uh, the, 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 the next section is, uh, so far it's intriguing, and I'm not really sure where it's going just yet. All right, well, um, that's what we have to go on. Anyway, uh, sorry about that interruption. Let us go ahead and do some bibliomancy. And, oh, there's a bookmark. Cupping my hands like a mountain valley, like the way the valleys of the earth cup their hands for light and drink, like the way the desert opens up its sweet mouth and laughs when someone melts pearls in the sky and rain, rain returns like a divine lover with a hundred wonderful gifts. 
Oh, the words from the true teacher bring my mind and cells such sacred nourishment and life. When the moon is full, it gets gregarious and likes to chat. I have heard it say, quote, Look what can happen, dear seeker, when you lean your graceful arms toward God in prayer. Look at all that amorous light you can catch that will help the night musicians and your soul get loose. Oh, it goes on. It goes on for a while. So that was the beginning of the Hafiz poem called Cupping My Hands Like a Mountain Valley. And I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I think next time it'll be someone. Who was it last time? I think it was, yeah. Is it really going to be, who was it now? Is it me? Was it supposed to be me? Is it going to be BT? I think this was supposed to be BT. I'm so confused. Uh, Editor Edward, could you uh, let us know what's going on? You're tripping. Nothing's going on. Um, BT recited the uh, Martin Luther recently. Uh, might as well point to it. I haven't pointed to anything this episode. And uh, Edward recited the secret of the golden flower. And uh, I think what it was was last night or the night before we were... As we were falling asleep, we were thinking, who did that last one and who did the one before? And uh, is BT going to be doing the Carl Jung? And we determined that no, BT is not doing the Carl Jung. uh, Because when BT does the Carl Jung, of course, he tends to put things up all over the screen. No, no, it's Gwydion does the Carl Jung. BT uh, is going to do Mech and Revelations. And that was the thought that popped into your head just now. And uh, no, we were wrong. We were falling asleep and we got it wrong. Uh, you, we got it right today. We didn't check. That's what happened. Was We tend to, like, we've gotten used to the wheel and how the wheel turns. And, uh, and we were correct to assign Gwydion to today's episode. Okay, I uh, hope everybody has a wonderful weekend. It's Friday. And uh, until next time. Okay. <laughs>